je regrette que le Premier ministre Netanyahou ait fait un autre choix et pris cette responsabilité, en particulier d'opérations terrestres sur le sol libanais. Et donc oui, si on appelle à un cessez-le-feu, la cohérence, c'est de ne pas fournir les armes de la guerre. Et je pense que ceux qui la fournissent ne peuvent pas chaque jour appeler à nos côtés au cessez-le-feu et continuer de les approvisionner. Nous essayons aussi d'être cohérents. Et lorsque nous demandons des cessez-le-feu, c'est le cas pour Gaza, ça a aussi été le cas pour le Liban la semaine dernière, eh bien nous tâchons de ne pas demander un cessez-le-feu tout en continuant à livrer les armes de la guerre. Et je pense que c'est simplement de la cohérence. Israël, quand face à cette attaque terroriste, a une légitime droit de protéger leurs propres gens et de dénoncer Hamas les moyens d'attaquer eux de nouveau. Et personne ici ne peut avoir souffert quelque chose comme le 7 octobre sans qu'il y ait des conséquences. Mais, la guerre que l'Israël est en Gaza a duré trop longtemps. Les milliers de milliers de thousands de civils victimes en Palestine ne peuvent pas être justifiées. Il n'y a pas d'explication possible pour ça. Il y a trop de personnes innocentes qui ont mouru, et nous les aussi mourons. Et ces personnes qui ont mouru sont une source d'outrage pour l'humanité et une source dangereuse de haine, de ressentiment, qui menace et va menacer toute la sécurité, y compris celle d'Israël, demain. Donc, cette guerre doit s'arrêter et un cessez-le-feu doit se passer le plus rapidement possible, à la même temps que les hostages sont libérés et que les aides humanitaires doivent arriver en masse dans Gaza. This is a position that we have held since October 2023, where we, the resolutions with many of us, let's hold the first humanitarian, uh, we, we held a humanitarian conference for Gaza in November 2023 in Gaza. It's now a question of political will given the destruction of the military capacity of Hamas and it is imperative that a new page is turned in, our, the, in Gaza for the guns to be silent, for humanitarian workers to to return and for civilians to finally be protected. France will participate in any initiatives that will save lives and will allow for everyone's safety to be protected. The deployment of an international mission must open the way for the implementation of the two-state solution. It is up to the Security Council to take a position on this and also Without further ado, the necessary provisions need to be taken to preserve the link between Gaza and the West Bank, to, respect, to restore Palestinian authority in its functions, and also to ensure the reconstruction of the territory, and to once again make life possible, quite simply. France will do, ensure everything can be done so that Palestinian people can finally have a state side by side with Israel. The conditions for just and lasting peace are well known. We just need to open the way for this, and the path towards this must be as short as possible. France will therefore uh, is, accept, is committed to the two-state solution and will renew its actions so finally it can benefit the people and meet their legitimate aspirations. A Palestinian state should be created, given all the necessary guarantees, security guarantees for Israel. So should, we should build the re reciprocal recognition and s common security guarantees for all in the region. And we'll be working on this over the next weeks with Israelis and Palestinians, with all re our regional and international partners as well. And in the, at this time, at the moment, the main risk is that of an escalation. I expend my brotherly thoughts to Lebanon and the Lebanese people. Hezbollah, for too long, has been running an untenable risk of dragging Lebanon into a war. Israel cannot, without consequence, just expand its operations to Lebanon. France demands that all, everyone respect their obligations along the blue line. So I call again for restraint and de-escalation at the border between Lebanon and Israel. Again, again, all parties to pull back from the brink. I call again for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza, the return of the sausages, the hostages, and a recommitment to the two-state solution, a recognized Palestinian state alongside a safe and secure Israel.
I have said it before, I will say it again, we absolutely recognise and support Israel's right to self-defence and have taken action uh, in support of that right of self-defence. I have made that repeatedly clear in all of my engagements with Israel across the region and with all of our allies. I absolutely stand by that. But in relation to licences, this is not an Israel issue. It is the framework for all licences that have to be kept under review. We will, of course, continue to stand by Israel's right to self-defence, but it is important that we are a country committed to the international rule of law. That gives us the strength of argument with our allies on important issues. Uh, This is a difficult issue, I recognise that, but it's a legal decision, not a policy decision. I call on Israel and Hezbollah, stop the violence, step back from the brink, We need to see an immediate ceasefire to provide space for a diplomatic settlement. And we are working with all partners to that end. Because further escalation serves no one. It offers nothing but more suffering for innocent people on all sides. And the prospect of a wider war that no one can control and with consequences that none of us can foresee. This is intimately linked with the situation in Gaza, where again we need to see an immediate ceasefire. It shames us all that the suffering in Gaza continues to grow. The answer is diplomacy. The release of all the hostages and the unfettered flow of aid to those in need. That is the only way to break this devastating cycle of violence and begin the journey towards a political solution for the long term, which delivers the long-promised Palestinian state alongside a safe and secure Israel. Dopo alcuni incidenti minori tra le forze israeliane e i dispositivi di sorveglianza e protezione fisica della base accorsi nei giorni 8 e 9 ottobre, in data 10 ottobre il, l'avamposto è stato fatto oggetto di colpi d'arma da fuoco da parte delle forze armate israeliane. I proiettili hanno colpito alcuni mezzi, le taniche del carburante ricor- dislocate all'interno della base e reso inefficienti le camere ottiche del sistema di sorveglianza delle installazioni. Installazione che è stata poi a lungo sorvolata anche da un drone dell'esercito israeliano. Gli atti ostili compiuti e reiterati dalle forze eh, israeliane contro la base UNP 131 eh, potrebbero costituire crimini di guerra e sicuramente rappresentano delle gravissime violazioni alle norme del diritto internazionale umanitario sicuramente violazioni non giustificate da alcuna necessità militare. Lasciate. Ho detto all'ambasciatore di riferire al governo israeliano che le Nazioni Unite e l'Italia non possono prendere ordini da Israele. Le Nazioni Unite e l'Italia sono lì in attuazione di una risoluzione delle Nazioni Unite e l'unico modo con cui si può discutere quello che facciamo è ponendo formalmente il tema alle Nazioni Unite, non sicuramente dando ordini alle azioni libere che sono lì per difendere il diritto internazionale di fare una cosa o di farne un'altra. È evidente che sta avendo una invasione por parte di un terzo paese, di un Stato soberano come è il Libano, e portanto la comunità internazionale non può permanecer ajena a esa invasione. Lo hemos denunciado en Ucrania, lo hemos denunciado también en Gaza y en este caso la invasión la estamos denunciando también en el Líbano. En Palestina, por almost a year now, we've been witnessing an unconscionable spiral of death and devastation, which is now unfortunately spreading to Lebanon. This is an escalation of the conflict, which is woefully grave in nature. Consequently, Spain condemns in the strongest terms the death of innocent civilians once again. And consequently, I wish to once again call for de-escalation, detente and diplomacy. International humanitarian law must be respected, as must international law. We must put an end 
to the conflict in Gaza and tackle the root causes of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. That's the only way that we'll be able to successfully extinguish the hotbeds of tension that are jeopardizing regional and global stability. Everything we're seeing daily in Gaza and now unfortunately in Lebanon is forcing us to think about the very validity of international humanitarian law, just as we mark the 75th anniversary of the Geneva Conventions. Spain will continue doing everything it can to provide humanitarian aid to the Gazan population with UNRWA as the key actor on the ground. However, none of this will be commensurate with need without a ceasefire. The only th everything will be everything except a ceasefire is insufficient. Once again, I appeal for a ceasefire, the release of hostages and the access of humanitarian aid. In any case, the evidence is resoundingly clear. We cannot go back to the, the, the situation which previously prevailed. It is imperative and urgent to apply a two-state solution for Israel and Palestine to coexist side by side in peace and security. That is the only possible solution to a conflict which has already dragged on for decades and which has claimed so many innocent lives. Moreover, the advisory opinion of the International Court of Justice requested, moreover, by this General Assembly of the United Nations has ruled that the occupation of Palestinian territories is illegal. What we're seeing is an occupation which must immediately stop. The time has come to work on the stabilization phase. That is the sole responsibility of the Palestinian Authority. Spain is committed to the PA and determined to increase that support. Ladies and gentlemen, as you will be well aware, Spain took the decision to recognize the state of Palestine on the 28th of May. That was a decision supported by the overwhelming majority of Spanish society and one whose only aim is to further the quest for peace in the region, a desire which has long been held. In 1949, a Spanish man, Pablo de Azcazate, was the first representative of the UN mediating mediator in Palestine. Today, it, re it continues to be moving to read his notes about that mission, which are full of bitterness in the face of the cat catastrophe that he senses was around the corner. Azcarate, Pablo Azcarate, was an egg uh, a man in exile, a Spanish Republican that the dictator prevented from returning to his homeland. It is perhaps for that reason that he empathized so much with the suffering of that land and his name deserves to ring out loud and clear 75 years since those uh, events. This year, before the end of this year, Spain and Palestine will hold the first intergovernmental meet meeting to broaden and deepen our bilateral relationship. I also want to underscore the importance of the recent meeting in Madrid of the Euro-Arab Islamic Group to catalyze the peace processes and to allow the two-state solution to come to fruition. It is urgent that we convene the peace conferences with the parties and the international community. This is an initiative supported by more than 90 countries, and that is a peace conference which will allow us to revive the spirit of dialogue which prevailed in Madrid in the beginning of the 1990s when the Israelis and Palestinians sat around the same table to negotiate. At such a complex juncture, I wish to reaffirm Spain's unconditional support for and commitment to peace. 